In this tutorial, we're going to add an appointment booking calendar to this spa's website. This is not a real spa, but the process would be the same if it was a real spa or if it was an online business like a coaching or consulting business. It works for brick and mortar and online. What we've done is we added a book now page called book today in the menu where we can choose services. For example, rejuvenation workshop, location, downtown, employee, Jane takes care of that one. If I chose Uptown, we now have Jane and Mary because Mary works in Uptown and Jane works there sometimes as well. So you can have multiple services with multiple locations and you can have services defined to only be in one location, not the other, or only certain days of the week in one location, not the other. You can have employees, as we see when we change from downtown to uptown. If we do downtown spa, we have Jane only, and then uptown, we have Jane and Mary. And so you can have different employees in different locations at different times, and the plugin figures out all the details, which makes your life super easy. If you click on next, it takes us to our calendar. These are Jane's available days as we set in the back end. I'm going to show you how to do all this. These are the times available. The uh, highlighting is unfortunate. This is part of my theme. This isn't the plugin's fault. This is the theme I chose. And if yours is doing this, you just got to come in and change the colors on your theme for selected buttons. And now we have this chosen, the Uptown Spa Employee Jane. Price is $25. Excellent. So if we click on reserve, we are now reserved in the back end. Super simple. Before we go any further, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos and like this video because that sends great signals to YouTube that you're enjoying it and you want more people to see this content. And if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comments down below. Let's get back into it. And with the reservation we just made, there's no upfront payment, but you can have it accept upfront payments if you want to. And this is a general booking calendar. We even have employee pages, as you see down here, Sam's image is a little big. It's ideal if you have them all the same size. You can see why in this video here. But if you go to Jane's page, for example, this is all information we added about Jane or social networks and her favorite color is blue and that's all great. But you can also have booking calendars just for individual employees right on their employee page. So this booking calendar here is for Mary. She only has skincare as a category. She only does a rejuvena rejuvenation workshop. She only does it uptown and her name is Mary. And then we can book a time with Mary specifically. So if you have a whole bunch of employees, you can have each of them have their own booking calendar, booking specific things that only they do at locations where they do it. Or you can have a general one where people have to select what they want and where they go. This would probably be for brand new customers. If you had a hair salon, for example, or even a spa like this example, people are gonna have preferred staff members they work with and they can book directly using these options once they get to know them. At first, they probably use the general booking form. With the free version, you're able to accept payments only in person. You can't process payments online. With the paid version of this plugin, you can process payments online. We'll get into more details about that in a few minutes. First, I'll show you how to get this plugin, and then you can follow along as we're doing this video. Head into the dashboard, go to plugins, and add new, and look up WordPress appointment booking. And the one we're using is this one here by Motopress. And this is the WordPress repository page here. I'll link to this in the description down below so you can come check it out. And, and that's all we've installed so far is just the plugin. And it adds this appointment link here with a lot of different options of what to do. And we're gonna go through pretty much all of it in this video. The very first thing you wanna do after you install it though is go to settings and go through these tabs up here because this will be the initial setup that you can work through. You can obviously change these at any time. We'll go through what each of these mean or most what, what most options mean and then we'll go through and create what I just showed you on the front end. So the default time step it shows is 15 minutes because in the scheduling tab where you define schedules, you can actually book in when your staff has breaks and when their lunchtime is and things like that. So at first I had this at 30 minutes. I think that's the default, the default is 30 minutes, but we don't have 30 minute breaks, at least not in this country. We have 15 minute breaks. And so I changed this to 15 so then I could book 15 minute increments for the breaks. The confirmation mode, this is after someone schedules you can confirm automatically or confirm manually by admin so the somebody books something it has to go through somebody with authority to actually confirm the booking and you can also confirm upon payment if you have a prepaid option or a full paid option depending on what the service is i'm going to have this as confirm automatically you can select the terms and conditions page i don't have one made currently but you just go to pages add new make a terms and conditions page come back here and then select it It'll be on this list. You can allow multiple booking. So one client can book more than one service at a time. You may or may not want that. You can allow coupons if you want. Those can be defined in the coupons tab right here. You can allow customers to cancel their bookings. 
if you check this box, just adds a cancellation short code to the emails that I'll show you in a minute. You customize the emails in this tab up here. There's a booking cancellation page. You have to make that as well by going to pages and add new. And you could do something like, or try to save the appointment or have a notification saying, um, we still charge 50% of the appointment cost for canceled appointments, things like that, depending on what you want to put on there. But you can create a specific page for that and create a specific canceled page to confirm the cancellation went through. You can have a customer account creation page. So this allows you to have a place where people can log in, kind of like in WooCommerce, and see information about their account. You can do not create automatically, you can enable customers to opt in, and you can create automatically. And then the account page, you'd have to create and use short codes to show data on that page. Under miscellaneous, we can choose our default country of residence, a default currency, our currency position, i.e. where this symbol goes before or after the currency, and then decimal separator, thousand separator, and number of decimals. For emails, we can define the emails that are sent out. So we have two sections of emails. We have the admin emails and the customer emails. Let's check out the admin first. We'll walk through what all these things mean, and the customer emails will be self-explanatory at that point. So we can enable or disable this, and this is an email that goes to your team, to the admin. So by default, it goes to the admin of the website that you set under settings and then general, whatever email address you have in here, that's the admin. So that's the default email address that this email is sent to. You can add more email addresses here. You could have it go to all your staff, to just your accountant, to just the secretary, whoever you want. You can put their emails in here, multiple. Just separate them with commas. For the subject, we have the site title and the new booking number. I want to customize this to something like, welcome to the Lotus Spa, your booking number is, and then give the ID number. Make it a little more customized. You want to go through and customize all these things. For the header, new booking ID, and then the ID number. Things in curly brackets are short codes. We'll check those out in a minute. Or we'll check them out right now, but there's a whole list down at the bottom of this page. We'll check that, that list out in a minute. So here's the email. Dear administrator, confirm booking. Here's the link to edit the book if it needs to be edited. Here's the services that are scheduled. Here's the client info, booking notes, which we didn't enter when we sent this email in, but booking notes are available, and booking total price right there. And that's the end of the email. And really this, what you'd include here is just information your team needs. And this seems pretty thorough. But if you wanted to add more information, there's more short codes down here. These are all the short codes you have available to you with the current settings. There's also extensions you can install for this plugin so you can get even more data to have in your emails and things like that, but that's what we have available to us right here. If you made any changes, click on Save Changes, and then head back out to Emails, and we have Customer Emails. And it's the same idea, same form, you have the same style of short codes, all that's the same. Come in and customize it as you need. And this right here, Reservation Details, we saw this as well in the other email. This is kind of like a nested short code. So we add just this one, but a lot of information is brought into here, which is defined somewhere else. As you can see right here, template part tags. So reservation details is part of a template, which is kind of like a nested set of information. And those templates are on this page right here, down at the bottom. So if I go into here, this now shows what is pulled in through the reservation details shortcode. And it pulls in these other shortcodes. Service name with employee name on this date from start buffer time, which is the time of the appointment plus uh, the buffer that you can set. So you need 10 minutes to prep for an appointment, you need 10 minutes after the appointment. That's part of the buffer time. Buffer start time, buffer end time, at location right here. And that's all incorporated into the reservation details shortcode, which is in the email. And there's more data you can put in there. This is the list right here. So if we go back to the main emails area, back into this new booking form. So that's what how, how this short code is defined and what goes into it. And then we just have this information here and cancellation details where you have your cancellation policy. And then the canceled booking is an email the customer would get when the booking is canceled. They'll have to go in there, all the same short codes, all the same stuff. Footer text is right here, linked to the site built with, and this would be the plugin information. And another template we have here is customer, res customer reservation details. So the, the one I clicked in earlier was the administration details. So when you add the short code to administrator email, this would be what they're getting. If you add this same short code to a customer email, this would be what they're getting. In this case, it's the same, but you can define it differently if you want to. 
for customers versus admin. Usually when you're presenting to customers, it should be a little nicer, I think. Um, so you can define that here. You got a logo URL to customize your email templates. You can change your colors, update them to your brand colors, and then your emails are done. It's all the emails there are. No option to add more emails in the free default plugin. For notifications, we can set the from email and the from name. This would be when an email is sent out. Who's the email address? Who it's coming from? What's their name? Then we have also SMS. This requires an extension, but you can have text message reminders sent out to your customers as well. We'll look at the extensions near the end of the video. For payments, we have the ability to pay on site, which is what I mentioned earlier for the free version. If you want the options of direct bank transfer, Stripe, or PayPal, that requires an upgrade to the premium version of the plugin. And for lots of local companies, paying on site is just fine. But for online companies, or if you want to have payment in advance, so they, they reserve their booking by paying a portion of the cost, you'll need to upgrade to make that work. When we've upgraded to premium, there'll be a manage button beside all these where you can configure it, and they're all gonna be different. So the pay on site, management page is going to be different than PayPal and Stripe and things. Check the box to enable it. Click on Save Changes. We can choose our default payer method, Pay On Site, since we enabled it. These others are all not enabled. That's why they all have no's. Time to complete payment. We have set as 60. This is the default. This would be the maximum amount of time you want to have before you assume the appointment is not going to happen. So if you want to allow someone to book six months in advance, you want to have this be something like 180 days. So you want to make sure that this is a number that works for your business. Otherwise, it's really going to mess up your scheduling. For payments, you can have a payment receive page, a custom one that you make. We haven't made one, but you just go to pages and add new and say, thanks for the payment. We received it. And you can make that here. Click on save changes if you made any. Integrations. You can have Google Calendar sync. This is for the premium version. And this syncs also to the employee pages, which we'll take a look at pretty soon. And it's useful to have the calendar sync right into the WordPress website. So those are the settings. That's really the boring stuff. This next part is where it gets a little more exciting because you can actually add your business into the platform. So where you want to start is employees. Here you add your employees. We click on add new to add a new employee. I'm going to open Mary's as well. So you can see the blank employee form which is just a Gutenberg editor, as you see here, with some information you can add down below. And then when it's filled in, we see something a whole lot nicer on the back end. We've got Mary's name as the title. I made this in H2. This is just the Gutenberg block editor. You can just add whatever kind of blocks you want in here. Just like any page or post you're creating in WordPress. There's her image, some text, book a time with Mary. This is the short code to her specific appointment form that I created. I'll show you how to do those after we've created the essential parts to create an appointment calendar, which is the employees, the services, the location, and the scheduling that they have available. And you can add their WordPress user email. This is important. If they have a user account, they, you can access their employee schedules, bookings, and payments all on the back end. So you want to make sure they've, they have their own user inside your WordPress site to make this function the best way possible. The employee phone number could be their direct line at your office or it could just be the secretary or their direct line at home or whatever have you, or what have you, depending on how you run your business. For social networks, you can add them as you like, add as many as you want or as few as you want. You don't need to add any at all. You can add CSS directly to them as well. Also, if you wanna add more contact info, you can add it the same way. Label, content, Link URL, if there is a link, doesn't have to be. CSS, if you want to add it, you don't have to. And the label, you don't have to add either. You can just have, just put test in here so we can see where this goes. It just shows test right here. And if we had, for example, um, home phone and then just their phone number, it shows home phone and their phone number. And that's how it looks when you add this content. You can also add additional info down here, same form. Super simple. And then we have this page created once you've added all this, all these details. And after you've added all your employees, you go to service categories. I just have skincare for mine. Service categories are not required, but they just help you be more organized. 
So I just added one called skincare for the spa, which makes sense. Once you have the categories created, you can add service tags as well for more organization. I didn't add any for this website just because it can be when you have a small number of services, it can be overkill to have categories and tags. For locations, I just created uptown and downtown. So if I open these the same way I did for the employees, open the add new and the uptown, let's close these extra pages. So the add new is again, the Gutenberg editor. There's no extra uh, meta boxes down below. It's just the title and the content. So here we have the title for the uptown spa and then a little bit of content describing the spa. And you can link to this. This could be a page that you link to from your website's menu system or not. It doesn't have to be. You just need to add a location. It could just be the title and the title becomes what you see here and that'll be what's selected in the drop downs. So you don't have to make all that content on there, but you do have to add locations so that you can properly build the scheduling calendar. For schedules, add new again and then choose Sam's schedule and Jane's. So add new, this is more in depth than the other pages we saw. So you add the title of the schedule, whatever it may be. It might be um, schedule for employees or it might be schedules for your services. Like it could be like skincare schedule. And there's a specific schedule for your skincare treatments that you can book. What I chose to do was to create schedules for the employees. So I chose Jane's schedule. For the employee, I chose Jane. Location. I chose downtown spa, and then I can add hours, Monday through Friday. So we have from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., working hours at downtown spa, Then she has a break. Oh, it's a big break. It's supposed to be 10, 15. Trash that at a new break. So Monday from 10 to 10, 15, not 11, 15, is break time at the downtown spa. There we go. That's better. And then we have 10, 15 to 12 is working hours and then lunchtime and then more working hours. And you can set this for every day, as you can see. I didn't go through and set them all up for every day because that would be too much work for this video and it's really not required. You get the idea. Click on add, choose the day, choose the time, choose the location, choose whether it's working hours, lunchtime or break and you've added that schedule. And for me, this is Jane's schedule. So this is for staff member Jane. But I was saying earlier, it could be like your skincare treatment schedule. Maybe you only do skincare treatments on Thursdays. Then you could have that set up in that way for skincare treatments, for example. For Jane, because she's on here five days a week, you could also set the days off. This is not days off like Saturday and Sunday because there's no schedule. So she's automatically on those days as days off. But if she, for example, booked off the 16th of November to the 23rd for a vacation, we now have that set in there and those periods cannot be scheduled for Jane. Those periods are now off the calendar. Custom working days is something you'd add where you're adding a work slot time for people who aren't regularly there, I would say. Because Jane here is working Monday through Friday and then maybe she comes in on Saturdays sometimes. So you could set that up in the custom options that you see here. And then once you've done everything you want to do in here, click on update or save, or in the case of add new, it's publish. And then you'll have Jane's schedule created. And you can also have them in different locations, as I'm sure you notice if you look closer. Like Jane has a downtown spa on Mondays and then she's downtown on Tuesdays, but she's up down spa on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. You could even have it where she's downtown spa in the morning, uptown spa in the afternoon. Lots of different ways you can do it. Sam here, I've set to work only in the afternoons and she changes spa location every day. And you can make these schedules however you figure out your schedules with your staff. And the last thing we have to do to get our booking calendar online is create the services. Let's open those as well, just like we've done all the way through. Add new, and let's open, let's do both of these again. So add new, we've got the Gutenberg editor here for the title and the description. Now we have this price, which is the cost of whatever the service is, the duration, how long it takes, up to one day in length. Buffer time is the time before the appointment that you need. So if your duration is 
Let's just hop over to one I've done already. For the skincare retreat, price is 100, duration is five hours. But because this is a retreat and I have to be set up, there's some work that goes into that, I've chosen the buffer time of one day, which is the maximum. So before the retreat happens, I've scheduled one day for whoever's doing the retreat to get it all set up. And then there's a buffer time after. And these times can't be booked. So if someone books this retreat on Saturday this week, then the buffer time means that we cannot schedule the same thing on Friday with that staff member or on uh, Saturday, or sorry, Sunday, because it's on Saturday. So the day before and a day after. You can't be scheduling anything with that person. Booking time before is how far in advance you have to book. So if you want to book a skincare retreat, say for a Saturday, you'd have to book it by Tuesday, I think it would be, whatever, whatever five days before Saturday is. And that will give everybody on your team enough time to figure out what's needed. For a lot of appointments, like the rejuvenation workshop, which in this case is only one hour, buffer time of 30 minutes on both ends, and then I have a booking time, book before time of three days. Let's just change this to like four hours. So they can book this within four hours of the time they want. So on Monday morning, they could book starting Monday afternoon for this appointment. Whereas here, if it was, like I said, on Saturday as an example, they have to book by Tuesday. I hope that made sense. So it's basically the amount of time you have to get ready for that appointment. And here we have minimum capacity of one, maximum of 10. You can make those whatever numbers you want. Multiply the price by number of people. This price here is $100. And that is for everybody who comes into this program. If it's one person or 10 people, it's still a $100 flat rate, unless you check this box. And then for every person who comes in, each person pays whatever this price is. So you probably want to select that, but probably not. Depends on what kind of appointment you're doing. You can provide a color for the service. You can choose which employees host this service. Add variation allows you to add different prices for different employees. I did that for the rejuvenation one. We have Jane and Mary that provide the rejuvenation workshop. But Jane, she's new here, so she only costs $25. The original price is $50. But if you book with Jane, it's half the price because she's new here. She's still in training or whatever it is. And so you can add variations like that. You can choose deposit settings. For this service, it's disabled, but you can have fixed, which is a fixed dollar amount or percentage dollar amount. I have it set over here as fixed and $10. And then you can provide messages for the notifications that will go before the appointment. And once you have that all filled in and worked out, you click on update or publish for one that's newly created or update it if you're making changes to any of them, we can now create the actual booking form. To do that, we go head over to short codes and this is where we create the booking form. This is the original one we made right here that we saw on that special page that we made right here, book today. So this is, this is that form right here where you can select any service, any location, any employee. That's that appointment form. And then we've created Mary's booking form, which is more specific to just Mary, which we saw on Mary's page right here. So to create a new short code, all you do is click on add new and you choose what you want to create. You can create an appointment form, an employee list, location list, services list, and service categories. At the very least, you're going to want to have an appointment form this plugin's all about. That's why you're watching this video, to be able to make appointments on your website. And so you add a title here. Let's make this Sam's appointment form. I'm not going to give it a title because I'm going to add my own title. If you look at Mary's here, this is actually a heading done in the Gutenberg editor. If I were to add a title, let's just add a title here. It's called Sam's appointment form. So you can see the difference when I add this to the page. Show items of these items here. I'm going to keep all of those because I want people to see all those things when they're going through the booking form. This is the labels tab. So you can change these labels for whatever these are called, like service, you might call it appointment, for example. So you can change that to appointment here. I'm just going to keep all those as is. And down here is where you want to choose what goes into the form. If we keep this as just the default numbers, we get the main booking form where they can book anything with anybody. But if we want to make this specific to Sam, for example, 
everything's going to be specific to Sam. It will only be what Sam does in our business as defined by the services, the schedule, and how we set that up earlier in this video. And I'm going to leave everything else as is. Click on publish. Now we have our short code right here. I'm going to copy that. Go back to employees. Go to Sam's page. And I'm going to add short code right down here. There's my short code there. If you don't see it there, just type in short code or start typing short code and you'll see it pop up. Paste in the short code, update, view the page. And we got to work on that picture. That's a little pancaked, but that's okay. We have Sam as the employee. We can choose skincare retreats. That's what Sam does. She doesn't do the rejuvenation workshop. That's why it's not on here. And the location, skincare retreat happens on both. And then we can click next and go through the form as we did at the beginning. And this is the title of the form, Sam's appointment. And that's hard to change. So that's what we added. Where'd it go? Short codes, Sam's appointment form. So we added the form title here. So I'm going to remove that and update and then refresh. Now that's going to be gone from there because it doesn't look very good. It's like it's barely noticeable. Instead, I'm going to come in here and add a heading or start with a paragraph, change that to a heading. I find that's usually faster. Move it up, update, refresh this page. Now we have a nice title for our form. And that's how we can add specific forms. And you might be thinking, well, if you can choose a specific employee for this form, could you also choose a location? Yes, you can. So you can have, instead of adding this to Sam's employee page, you could have a booking form that shows up on the location page. And you can make that a specific location, whatever you choose here. Or you can have services pages on your site and have them book specific services. And that's the core of the plugin. You now have an appointment calendar on your site if you follow it along. Now, once it's on your site, it's going to be used by people, hopefully. And then once it starts being used, you're going to have things showing up on your calendar. You're going to have bookings show up, which is the same as a calendar. Just it's a list of your bookings that are showing up on the calendar. You're going to have payments show up especially if you have payments activated for making prepayments online using the premium version. If you don't have that, you got to go into your bookings and add payment manually. So let's assume that I showed up for my appointment. I have this set as zero because I didn't change the default settings, but you know where we saw the, the, the currency settings, you just set it there. Keep everything as it is. Now we've posted a payment. And now if we go back to payments here, it shows we've posted that payment. And I go into the details and see what that was. And that's how you would perform a manual payment. Here it shows price of 25 euro and paid 25 euro. If you rewind this video one minute, you'll see this is, says paid zero. So now we added the manual payment, it shows paid 25. And you can also add new bookings manually. For example, people might call your office to make a booking. Then you click add new if you have the premium version. The non-premium version, you have to do the bookings on the website. So you can even take them on the phone as well. It's just that your staff would have to be trained to use the booking form on the front end of your website and fill it out that way. But if you have the premium, you can just click on add new and create an appointment right here in the back end. Depends on how you want to do it and how you're comfortable with doing it. And then you might want to do coupons to entice prospective customers to come to your spa or whatever your business is. Coupon code can be 10 off for 10% off, pretty common one. Then you just fill out this form here. Let's make this a percentage, 10%. Give a description if you want. This is mostly for you because you'd be giving these coupons out at like a trade fair or emails or in person or somehow you'd be giving these coupons out. And this description is really just for you describing what it's about. You can add expiration date if you want. You can choose which services it applies to. You can add the date when it starts, the date when it ends, the usage limit. So this would be not per person, but it would be overall. So if you had 10 off and you sent it out to your email list, and maybe you said something like the first 100 people to use this coupon get 10% off, you want to put 100 on this usage limit or no usage limit. And the same in the email, here's a 10% off coupon. Doesn't matter how many people claim it, it's 10% off, no limit. And that's coupons. That's all there is to those. And when they fill out their form, there'll be a coupon field where they can add coupons. Notifications allows you to set notifications. If you click on add new, 
Notification type is only email. If we set up our SMS that we saw earlier, SMS will be an option here as well. You can choose the triggering event. The trigger details allows you to set when the notification sent out before the appointment, one day, one hour before or after. You can have thank you messages sent out after, what time it's sent, who the recipients are. The form is pretty self-explanatory and you can use all the short codes that we saw earlier as well that you see down here. The one thing to note about notifications is these run on WP Cron, which is the WordPress Cron job script, but that only fires when someone visits the site. So if you have a notification scheduled to go at noon, because if we look back at our form here, we can choose it to go at whatever time we want, and you can even have daily notifications sent out if you want to. But those only fire if you have visitors to your site. If you want it to fire no matter what, you have to add this information as a cron job in your hosting account. And that will then fire using the hosting account scripts. We'll cron job this and fire the script at the specified time. And I believe this is 15 minute intervals to make sure that no notifications are missed. This is probably the option that you wanna go for if you're setting lots of notifications. And I've got a tutorial in the card up above in the description down below that walks you through how to set cron jobs on your hosting account. It's pretty straightforward and this is the information you need for it. And that video really shows you where to find the cron job information in your hosting account. Then you just add this to your host's cron job section. We have a customers list. Currently, I'm the only customer for this spa. We can go into edit customer. It shows very limited information here, but we have a customer list at least. Short codes we saw earlier, settings we saw. Help provides information about everything inside the plugin. Not everything, but lots of things. So this is a short code for show service. This explains what that means. So it's basically giving more details. They try to make the short code self-explanatory, like show image, pretty self-explanatory. But which image? Well, it's the featured image, which you can see in the help page. So it, it, it helps you figure out what short codes are, especially when you want to add these to your emails and notifications, you want to know what exactly those short codes are. And the last section is the extensions. With the free plugin, we can accept cash in person with the upgraded paid version of the plugin we can accept cash in person paypal stripe and direct bank transfer and if we get this extension we can also accept accept payments through square so if that's what you need this is the extension for you you can also click on the name to get it for more more information about that extension you can have google analytics for your appointments so you can track more closely what people are doing on your booking forms you can integrate twilio sms this is the sms notifications that we mentioned earlier and you can also have appointment booking WooCommerce payments. And WooCommerce payments, that encompasses a lot of different payment types. So you can have umpteen different payment types if you get the WooCommerce payments extension. Most people would be fine with just PayPal and Stripe and even just in person, depending on what the business is. But you have all these options as well. And if you go premium, we see what you get with the pro version and the free version. And there's a whole lot more you get with the pro version, even more than it shows here. If we go to the repository page over here, we have a list of features for the free version. And then if we click on pro version down here, it takes us to the ModoPress website. These are the developers of this plugin. And if you scroll through here, you can see what the pro features are and what you get with the pro features. And there's quite a bit, but the free version is very capable. For many, many businesses, the free version worked just fine. I think online businesses will wanna go for the paid version right away so they can accept payments online versus in person. Um, me, for example, when I'm doing coaching for clients, I don't want them to come to my house to pay me. I just rather do it online. <laughs> so for me, the pro version is an immediate purchase because I wanna be able to do it all online. But it really depends on what kind of business you're running. So I encourage you to check out this plugin. Just head over to plugins and add new and add it, or go to this page that I've linked in the description down below and check out the features it has and see if it can help you accomplish what you're doing. And if this video wasn't enough, and before you install on your site, maybe you want a plugin demo. You can go to plugin demo right here and you can try out the plugin and see how it works. You can also watch video overviews, video guides, and check out the documentation. So there's lots of resources to check out this plugin and it can really help you accomplish your business goals if you incorporate it on your website. And if you haven't done so yet, check out this tutorial series right here, which is all about speeding up your WordPress site because you want customers to have a great experience in your website, which makes it more likely they're gonna actually book and follow through with their bookings. 
and you want a fast website to make that work. So check out this playlist. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.